What's going on everybody? Marvel the Cross 316 back with another comic book flashback today. We are looking at The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 57. This issue came out in February of 1968. And as we see on the cover today, we have Spider-Man going up against Kazar and also the Sabretooth tar Tiger, which is Zabu. And so we have a great story for y'all today. We're continuing the storyline from last issue. We had pretty much saw that Spider-Man went up against Dr. Octopus and he finally defeated Dr. Octopus last issue but in the process Spider-Man has lost his memory and so now Spider-Man is on his own we had the police after Spider-Man and so this is very dangerous for Spider-Man because he is vulnerable he's in a vulnerable state he doesn't even know who he is as a civilian as we know he is Peter Parker but again, he doesn't even know his name. He doesn't know where he lives. He doesn't know what he does for a job. So we have a lot going on in this issue. And we'll see exactly how Kazar um, comes into all this and plays all into all this today. So before we get started, go ahead and give this video a like. And subscribe if you have not. And let's go ahead and get started. As always, this is brought to you by Stan The Man Lee, who wrote the issue. We have Jazzy John Romita doing the artwork. We have Don Heck um, at doing the penciling as well. And we also have Miggy DeMeo doing the inking and Sam Rosen. So we have a lot of contributors to this great story today, especially having Don Heck added to the list of people contributing to the Amazing Spider-Man saga as we've been continuing this comic book flashback for the past 56 years episodes and now we are looking at issue 57 so we start out the issue today we have spider-man here he is hungry and as every human being at some point during the day gets pretty famished so what he does he pretty much webs up one of these sandwiches at this party and so he starts to eat this sandwich then he's like you know what i need to get some shut eye i've been up all day up all night Fighting Dr. Octopus, don't even know if he's my real partner or not. As we know, Dr. Octopus was apprehended by the army and the nullifier was retrieved by Colonel Jameson. That was the main mission. But now, Spider-Man is what's on everybody's mind, as well as the missing Peter Parker. We also have Spider-Man here. He decides that he's going to take a big, long nap right here at this railroad terminal. And so we also remember from last issue that Peter Parker's aunt, Aunt May, gets very worried. And she's, you know, if you, if, you, you have, if you have been keeping up with the comics and these reviews, you know that Aunt May tends to worry a lot, especially for her um, nephew, Peter Parker. So she can't fall asleep. She wonders if Harry Osborn, Peter Parker's roommate, has... Um, found out any more information as to the whereabouts of Peter Parker and then she collapses on the floor and we have Anna Watson her roommate she calls Dr. Bromwell who is the family doctor so now we're going to have another <laughs> seems like Aunt May is always getting either ill or she's passing out this is a repetitive thing here going on within these issues it seems Aunt May just can never get it together and we also see here that Colonel Jameson here is being questioned as to why he allowed Spider-Man to leave last issue. He, he could have apprehended Spider-Man as well. But we recall, if you've been keeping up with these reviews, that Spider-Man has saved John Jameson three times in issue number one, issue 41, and then last issue in issue 56. So John Jameson thinks that Spider-Man is innocent. He has the unpopular he has the unpopular opinion than other people. And we also see that Captain Stacy, who made his appearance last issue, makes another appearance here. And so another figure, key figure that's going to play into this story today is none other than our good friend J. Jonah Jameson. And he's going to be the one that contacts Kazar 
to attack Spider-Man. Now, Kazar is coming to the United States. He lives in the Savage Land. If you know anything about Kazar, he lives in the Savage Land. He lives on his own. He hates living in a civilized society. He prefers living in the outdoor jungle area, kind of tropical area. But he's come back to New York because he's, as we see here, he's going to discuss legal matters about his estate. He's come upon a huge sum of money that he's inherited from, I guess, one of his family members had passed. So he's come to settle some legal matters, and he's seeking the aid of Daredevil, who is also Matt Murdock. So it's pretty cool. Zabu's in this, you know, taxi cab here. So we have Kazar. He finally gets to his ho little hotel here, and then we see that Jameson comes on by. Zabu is about to attack Jameson, and the only thing that, you know, causes Zabu to stand down is the word of Kazar. So we see that Jameson here, as he did with Scorpion, as he did with his own son, he's going to do the same with Kazar. He wants Kazar to go on this mission to capture Spider-Man. And so he's going to try to convince Kazar that Spider-Man is a menace to society. Now we also recall that Harry Osborn and Gwen Stacy have also been searching for Peter Parker. And Harry Osborn is starting to feel upset because he's been giving Peter Parker the cold shoulder in the past few issues. So he searches the room of Peter Parker and he comes across this spotty, their little spider tracer. And so now he comes to the conclusion that Spider-Man must have kidnapped Peter Parker. So now he's going to have to tell Gwen Stacy and all these people that Spider-Man has kidnapped Peter Parker. So Peter Parker, as Spider-Man, still dealing with amnesia, swings on by. Dr. Bromwell says the only good medicine that Aunt May could have is to see her nephew and know that he is safe. Spider-Man swings on by and he... He comes to this um, place where um, Captain Stacy and Colonel Jameson are at. He's like, look, y'all, I don't even know who I am, and I need your help. Then we see Gwen Stacy. She barges in, and she's like, what have you done with Peter Parker? Where is he at? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And then Spider-Man's like, for some reason, I feel that I, I know this person. Why do I know? It feels like I know her by the scent of her perfume and why is my heart pounding in my chest so rapidly? So Spider-Man leaves. He's like, I'm not getting any new information. We see that Jameson here convinces Kazar to go after Spider-Man. So now Kazar is on the hunt for Spider-Man as he swings through the city here. He's going to use this rope, this grappling hook, to use as a weapon here. And so Kazar is very unique. He's almost exactly like... Craven the Hunter, he has that jungle sense. He just he can hunt um, his prey pretty easily. Then we see that Spider-Man swings on by the Daily Bugle, and he's going to see if Jameson knows anything about his identity. And this is Jameson's great greatest chance here to learn who Spider-Man is. And he tells Spider-Man that he's one of his biggest fans, and he would love to see him without his mask. And so while Spider-Man is about to take off his mask. We see right here that Kazar leaps through the window um, just at the right opportune time because Spider-Man was just about to take off his mask to reveal his secret identity, and Jameson would have realized that that was Peter Parker. But now that has been foiled here as Kazar is now fighting Spider-Man within the office of, da of the Daily Bugle. We see Spider-Man and Kazar. They're going to start fighting here. we got some great action scenes drawn by John Romita and Don Heck here. Awesome stuff here. Um, Spider-Man and Kazar are fighting. I mean, they both are pretty equal in their strength here. And then we see that Zabu here, he's been locked up in the hotel, but for some somehow he knows that his master is in trouble. So we see Zabu here. He smashes through the door. He's on his way to come to the aid of Kazar. You see that Spider-Man runs out of web fluid. So now Spider-Man is without webbing, one of his 
most potent weapons here, and now Kazar here is going to launch himself on to Spider-Man here. Spider-Man and Kazar are now fighting within Central Park, with, and there's a lake nearby, and that lake is going to serve a purpose here as we see that Zabu launches himself onto Spider-Man. They both plunge into this lake. Zabu gets out of the lake, and Kazar comes to Kazar realizes that, man, Spider-Man is one of the most agile foes I've ever fought, and I should have been the one to defeat him. I, I didn't need your help, Zabu, but thanks for the help anyway. But then he realizes that Spider-Man has not surfaced from this lake. So Spider-Man is drowning in this lake. So we see that Kazar, he plunges back into the lake here, and so he's going to say Spider-Man, I mean, his lungs are filling near breaking point but Kazar finally gets out of the lake he rescues Spider-Man and now we're going to end the issue right here right off on a cliffhanger here what's going to happen next issue as we look at issue number 58 will Spider-Man be able to um, recover here because I mean is he even alive at this point we don't even know could this be the, the end of Spider-Man as we know it We'll find all this out next issue. I hope to see you there as we look at issue number 58. And until next time, keep reading comments.